Hey, what's up, guys? I hope everyone is enjoying the new Street Fighter V balance patch, man. It's been a crazy few days. There's been tech and information going everywhere. We've been hammering out patch notes for you guys. I've been so busy, dude. I've been streaming live every single day, and I'm also testing out the changes myself. But yeah, I wanted to release this video a couple of days ago, so let's just do it now before it's too late. So I want to talk about which characters I personally feel have received the most significant buffs this season. Now, let me clarify this so no one's confused. I do not mean I think these characters are like the three best characters in the game or, you know, super top tier necessarily. I just mean where the characters were at and the changes that were given because a lot of characters got buffs this season. A lot. Even characters that are already top tier have received buffs. But I want to talk about characters I feel like have significantly changed them in a way that they could overcome some bad matchups and really actually move them up and help them. So let's narrow it down to three, keep it really simple here. And I might mention some special mentions as well. And unfortunately, guys, it ain't Nash. <laughs> I don't know why I had that on the screen. I didn't do that on purpose, guys, I swear. So we're going to talk about one of my favorite characters in this game, <laughs> and that's Elixir. Definitely one of the most buffed characters for this final season. I honestly thought Capcom had no idea what to do with this character, man. The thing about Alex is what makes him different from other grapplers is that Capcom doesn't want him to be like an Oki grappler. He's going to be a character that racks up massive stun and does big hits, and then he cashes out with his grab at the end, stuns you, and then kills you with a huge fat combo in the corner. That's pretty much what his design was, and he's supposed to use long range pokes, but it doesn't work well in Street Fighter V because these long range pokes don't really convert into anything. And of course, he lacked many, many other tools, especially Oki, because, you know, grapplers need Oki. So let's talk about what they changed with him, but, you know, <laughs> spoilers, they changed everything. So one big thing they did with Alex is that they made his lights crazy. So his standing light punch now links into his standing light kick, and he can do like three hit light confirms. And this is really important because he can go into the EX chop. Uh, he's got this new V trigger cancel now where he can do EX chop into V trigger cancel, which is insane. EX chop is already safe on block. And if he lands that EX chop, he can do these crazy combos where he goes into his down four hard punch and he can get into Oki at the end. He basically has a massive safe plus on block V trigger activation, which is, uh, in my opinion, a big deal when it comes to making your character top tier, some kind of unga move. Speaking of unga, they buffed up Alex's stomps. <laughs> and they made the stomp safe. So the stampede here, they made it from minus five, which was very punishable, to minus two. I don't know why. They also made it easier to go through fireballs. I just, it's just crazy, this move. So now you definitely have to jump it or V-shift it if you guys want to punish it. And then on top of that, they made his head crush. The spin jump head crush, they made it so he can cancel his V-skill too with it. And then now if he lands this, he can even land super after this and convert it to massive damage. That head crush does like over 300 stun. It is so insane, dude. Another big change, you know how I said that Capcom, you know, doesn't want Alex to be an Oki grab character. Well, they gave him an Oki grab. So now his power drop, that's the backdrop from his heavy flash chop. The EX version now gives him Oki. I think he's like plus three or plus four, something absurd after that. And he's got a lot of ways that he can get into it from the crush counter, from the V trigger one. There's, there's some really easy methods to get into it. And that's amazing because they didn't nerf the, the EX power drop. I don't know why. It still does absolutely massive stun and then Alex is standing right next to you smiley face and you're like one hit away from being stunned so that's that's awesome they also buffed Alex's anti-air as they made so the EX knee smash where he goes upwards it's airborne invincible on frame one now so no matter what as long as the opponent is in the air even if he does like almost a meaty jump you can use this in the clutch and then grab them <laughs> and his uh crouching hard punch also on the second hit you can use the normal knee smash to get Oki because that's the Oki version now after they changed it. So that's really, really good. And then, man, they buffed his V-Skill 2. So now he, he no longer loses the V-Skill 2 when he gets knocked down. He just keeps it, which that should have been the case in, in the first place for Alex. And man, dude, and they buffed both his V-Triggers. Like I said, I, I got to show you guys these V-Trigger cancel combos. They're, they're hilarious. I can't wait to break down the patch notes for this character for you guys. But take my word for it, this is like the biggest buffs I've seen for a character in a while for, especially for Alex, man. You know, Capcom actually tried to mix it up this time instead of just buffing his forward hard punch. 
And the second most buff character I feel, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have guessed this one, is definitely Kage. This is another one I was really surprised about because this is a character that Capcom, once again, they have a philosophy of the character. They don't want to change that philosophy. And because of that, it really restricts them on how they buff a character. In Kage's case, uh, it's him not having long range fireballs outside of his red fireballs, of course. But then they tried to break the rules and that's why I feel like the character is a lot stronger now. So with Kage, if you look at his notes carefully, you pretty much realize that they buffed almost everything about him. Mo almost every single one of his normal attacks, his special attacks, you know, his V-Trigger. They changed a lot. Um, I actually broke down the notes on him uh, recently, so if you want to see it really in-depth, it's already up on the channel. But they gave him a lot of different confirms now into his heavy Tatsu, and he inherently gets Oki, and he's the kind of character that he's already really strong or close. But now he has so many tools in the neutral to help him get close, right? So he's such a low health character. And if you have a low health character that doesn't have long range fireballs, uh, he has to make up with it with his normal attacks, right? So they buffed, they made his crouching medium kick super easily confirmable into his medium Tatsu. And that will lead to big damage and Oki. Uh, they buffed like two key normal attacks, making him faster, the standing medium kick. Uh, this st uh, forward hard punch uh, command normal. Uh, they're both eight frames now. Uh, like the forward hard punch could be confirmed as super, for example, right? And then they also buffed his air fireball, making it have an explosion. And what this does is that it's not like you know a, as amazing as a normal fireball would be, but the fact that it hits them on the ground, you can at least have something to wear down the opponent where you don't necessarily have to go in, especially you have like a life lead, for example. On top of that, that crouching medium punch, man. It's just super crazy now that you have a three medium confirm, especially when you hit him crouching. I love the changes where they add uh, combos that work only on crouching characters. I think that's awesome. The triple light confirm is great too. Just like Alex got that triple light confirm. They really want to give these characters triple light confirms. And then of course the V trigger too is also very huge. Uh, you know, they wanted to justify the reason of a character that has such low health, a three bar V trigger. now. I know all you guys are thinking Akuma, but Akuma, before they nerfed him, he was able to whiff Fireball into activation. That is such a huge deal for a character, because Akuma is really low health uh, by the time he activates. So when he gets his V-Trigger, he's immediately changing the pace of the game. I don't think with Kage, they're necessarily made it that powerful, but at least the guaranteed minimal damage, or minimum damage of 30% is huge. And then on top of that, calming after the super, giving him more routes with that. And then of course the hard knockdown with the finisher is really, really good. And of course they gave him almost a full screen fireball while his V trigger two is up. They tried to make it as powerful as they possibly could. I still feel that like he should have got something like a, a, a whiff fireball activation like Akuma styles uh, to really help him push to get to like really top tier. Because if we're looking at Shoto's once again, I consider Luka Shoto and, and Luke is just insane. But if you look at where Kage was before and you look at all these notes together, man, he's definitely uh, really, really moving up. Now, the third most buff character, I'm kind of torn between two characters right now, but I'm going to lean towards one and I'll explain why. But if you guys are curious, I was thinking between Armika or Ibuki. They both are characters that were really strong before, but then after a few nerfs, and the addition of the V-Shift system, it really hurt these characters because these are both very strong mix-up characters. And Mika got a lot of awesome stuff back, but I feel like between the two, I think Ibuki came out more on top just because Mika is inherently a grappler, which means that when she does the grab, she is at risk, whereas Ibuki is much safer when she does her mix-up. She's not doing a command grab and going, you know, all, all or nothing. If the opponent guesses right, she doesn't get massively punished like Mika would. But one big thing I'll just mention about Mika is that they gave her back the invisible wall with the Irish whip back throw, which is awesome. That really helps push the opponent more consistently to the corner. And they really buff some key normals like the standing leg kick and crouching medium kick are now both special cancelable, which is really nice. It really helps Mika's neutral and it really helps her have more opportunities to get into that mix-up situation. So even if they do V-shift it, she can get back in. And, uh, you know, the opponent doesn't have infinite V-gauge, right? So that really helps her. 
So going to Ibuki here, now I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about Ibuki, this is one of the only characters that I didn't learn in this game, but I can tell you right now, if the patch notes literally just had this one line, if all her patch notes said was, V-Trigger 2 <laughs> goes from minus 4 on block to plus 2, if you're an Ibuki player you would already be happy, <laughs> because this was one of the biggest things that made Ibuki so, so strong, dude. The V-Trigger 2 is so powerful for Ibuki because it's a one-time activation V-Trigger, which is rare in this game, and it causes such a hardcore mix-up situation with so much depth and counters to the opponent's defense. And the fact that it's plus 2, it adds so much utility to Ibuki's game. It's not even just comboing into it, right? But like, even when the opponent jumps, you can use it as an anti-air, for example. You can use it on neutral, and you can immediately and use that as an opportunity to get in, which is really powerful. And because it's a one-time activation, a lot of the times you see in Ibuki matches, her being able to use it twice in a, in a single round, right? Which is really, really good. But of course, with now with the V-Shift system introduced, Capcom feels like they went too hard on V-Trigger 2, and then now brought it back up to the crazy plus 2 situation. Now, V-Shift, I mean, whenever I use V-Shift on Ibuki, I get blown up. It doesn't seem like the V-Shift really helps because she has so many ways to get around it, but they also buffed the per V skill too, where the Caltrop she throws on the ground, she can now hit them. And I'm not sure exactly what this is for. Like I said, I'm not a Buki main, but this is more reasons to help her deal with V shift, which they're describing in this description. And then on top of that, um, they buffed up uh, some key normals here, and they even gave her a new special move, which is really really sick. Uh, they really like that standing medium kick, by the way, because that counter hit leads to that crouching hard punch. I've seen some cool damaging combos with it. Um, Ibuki takes a lot of labbing time, man. And I'm seeing some of the Ibuki army is already, you know, stocked and ready to rock and roll this season. So hopefully uh, we get to see some more Ibuki and see some more flashy plays because that's what we want. We want to see a different meta and see some characters we haven't seen in a while uh, return. And yeah, I... Like I said, Ibuki, she got some key uh, changes to really help her. And like I said, she was already a pretty good character. Of course, Topanka rates her really, really low. And that's mostly because just the devastating nerf they did on V-Trigger 2. Just really, really hurt her. And of course, the V-Ship meta. So let me do some quick mentions here. Uh, one character, and Bison. <laughs> Dude, and Bison is so crazy. I don't know why they buffed this character. But I mean, you guys are going to see these new V-Trigger 1 combos, they're so insane, dude. I didn't want to mention Bison because, I mean, dude, the character's already top tier. Ken has a really cool change. He's able to V-Skill run cancel, or V-Skill to cancel his fireball on V-Trigger 1, allowing him, like, two guaranteed, like, pressure situations, which is really, really sick. I can't wait to see how this character lands. Nikali, <laughs> Dude, no one plays this character, man. He's gotten so many changes. Like, look at this list. Like, if you just look at it, you're like, man, this character got so buffed. But, dude, this character is so boring, dude. No one's going to play him anyways, man. He could be, like, low-key the best character in the game, and no one would care. Also, I want to mention how Capcom trolled us with Vega for the last season. I thought this character was going to get massive buffs for sure. But, no, they gave him a new move, Beast Reveal. <laughs> so, now... Uh, you can take your mask off when you, whenever you want, instead of just waiting for you to get your ass kicked. <laughs> Come on, Capcom. What, what was up with Vega, man? <laughs> I don't understand. And I guess finally, uh, Lucia. So Lucia is also interesting too. She got a lot of changes to her V skills, and it basically changed on how her V triggers work because uh, Lucia is the kind of character that like she's using her V skills very very often as her main tool set uh, compared to a lot of other characters because she can like cancel her v skills from her run it's like part really big part of her kid and her character and there's been a lot of changes with these combinations and i'm seeing some cool clips with her lately but i don't know if this necessarily helps her with her bad matchups this is going to take some time in the oven for the lucia players to fine tune but I'm liking when I see because I'm really disappointed with her V skill to that jump kick. It seemed completely useless, but they really, really buffed it up now. And even V skill one, and uh, she's got some cool, like really cool long corner carry combos to help her. And uh, yeah, she's she's just like not really a super popular character. But I would like to see Lucia really race to the top. 
So that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts, guys. Let me know if you agree with me or disagree, and if there's any other characters you feel like got really significant buffs that I should have mentioned. I'm open all ears. But yeah, man, I think we should have some fun and maybe make like a really early tier list predictions. I think that'd be fun before the big tournaments really start here, and we'll see how the meta changes, see between the winners and the losers. Anyways, guys, back to patch note videos, and uh, we should do some more Journey to Street Fighter 6. That'll be fun too, because we're going to be getting some news in the summer. So, really hype in the Street Fighter world. I hope you guys are enjoying the patch once again. And of course, subscribe to the channel. We're releasing a lot of videos now. We're really active now. So yeah, okay guys, stay safe, take care, peace.